Well, World War II veterans are some of our country's greatest treasures. We had the chance to fly to D.C. with 22 of them with Honor Flight Bluegrass just last week. We caught up with this veteran at the Vietnam Wall and soon found out he's just as chipper at 98 as he was in 1945. And he has quite the story to tell. Well, hello there. Meet Albert Hall. I've, I've survived three wives. <laughs> Uh, they say, they say I worried them to death. What was worse, World War II or three wives? Out of my three wives, the first one. <laughs> At 98 years old, he has more energy and spunk than most, more than half his age. And if you ask about his service. I was World War II in the Pacific. He remembers every detail. As a matter of fact, that's how many landings we made right there. Now, I'm not a hero, no way near it. I'm just an old man that was fortunate enough that God took me through that without a scratch. Throughout the world, throngs of people hailed the end of the war in Europe. In the summer of 1945, Nazi Germany had surrendered. Hitler was dead, but the war with Japan wasn't over. Albert Hall was transferred to the USS Halsey Powell at Pearl Harbor. We've set this course out of Pearl, heading for Japan. Two days after we got underway, they told us where we were going. First mission, the industrial city of Hiroshima. Second mission, the port of Nagasaki. On the sixth day of August, on the same course we was on, they dropped the first atomic bomb. They didn't surrender. They were being hard-headed, obstinate, crazy. On the ninth, they dropped the second one. We changed from a Invasion force to in uh, occupation. It was the brutal, costly eastern half of the most horrible worldwide war in human history is now within minutes of ending for good. On September 2nd, 1945, the USS Halsley Powell was one of hundreds of American ships anchored in Tokyo Bay. Albert Hall was there. Missouri was right close to us. We were anchored close to them. And I got to see them sign the peace treaty. I had a grandstand view of, the, of that. I saw them when they signed it, the, the end of the war. What were you feeling in that moment? Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> I was going home. Mm. That's about the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. At the Vietnam Wall. He's found it, Jack Meacham. Well, thank you, Steve. Yeah, Appreciate you. that. I took a picture for you. Albert finds the name of his son's best friend. And he ate dinner with me before they caught the plane going to Vietnam mm -hmm. in Nashville, Tennessee. I was working out of there. And he was in the country for what, 19 days? He was there 19 days when they killed him. What do you think about whenever you see his name? I tell you what, I'm, I'm not impressed by a whole lot, but I am impressed and this feel a deep sorrow for this right here. That was a complete waste of young people. We were meddling when we went in there. We didn't have any business in that place. The only war we were ever in that I felt justified was the one I was in. I had to go, we had to go, and almost lost it. The grace of God and his love for this rotten bunch of people is what was our savior. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I believe that just as sincerely as I believe anything. Just as surely as you're a pretty girl. <laughs> After 98 years of life, it is this day alongside his fellow veterans in Washington, D.C. that he says just might be the best one yet. One of the best things in life. And I'm thanking you, dear, for what you did too. <gasps> You're so sweet. You're a sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you for your service. We wouldn't okay. be here without you. Take care, will you? you okay. Too. okay. You too. Uh, he was a sitting character. salute. And there you go. Everywhere he went. I like how people were. I noticed in the crowd. Hanging on every word, even recording what he was saying. Absolutely. We were at the Vietnam Wall, and yet people would stop in their tracks just to, to shake his hand and to take video of what he was saying. I mean, it's not something you're going to hear from these veterans for very much longer, so it's, it's pretty incredible that we were able to capture that. Of course, D-Day coming up on Thursday. Our stories will continue all week. Now we're going to check in with Chief Meteorologist.